You ever looked at a great ape before and thought how weirdly human they are? Well, there's a good reason for that. Humans like you and I belong to a group of mammals scientifically categorized as hominidae, more commonly known as great apes. Other members of this group include gorillas, orang or orange utans, or orangutans, bonobos, and chimpanzees. We humans share about 96% of our DNA with chimpanzees, and our closest genetic relative is actually the bonobo, with whom we share 98.7% of their DNA. It's statistics like these that have intrigued geneticists and zoologists for decades sometimes to the point of conducting strange and creepy experiments. Soviet scientists, chimpanzees, and human hybrids. It's Weird Wednesday. Welcome to Weird Wednesdays here on Shadow Matter, where I take a look at the strangest side of our world here every second Wednesday. Full credit to my lovely wife for sending me this story. Thank you, honey. You are a great ape. Love you, monkey. Humans, chimpanzees, and bonobos are more closely related to each other than they are to other primates. Great apes are all closely related genetically, and going back through the centuries, this genetic relation has fascinated scientists. Theories of crossbreeding humans with our wild relatives has long been pondered since the European expansion into the continent of Africa. And that's how it remained for centuries. Just theories. In the early 20th century, Soviet scientist Ilya Ivanov went a few steps further and attempted to create a human-chimpanzee hybrid, first in French Guinea and later in the USSR. Yeah. This story gets weird. The hybrid term humanzy would not be in common use for several decades after Ivanov's experiments, but for the purposes of this video, we will be using that term. It all begins during the dictatorship of Joseph Stalin in the Soviet Union. Urban legend states that Stalin was keen on starting his own army of human chimp super soldiers to wage war and wreak havoc across Europe. This was however debunked and the real story is that it was actually Ivanov's desire to create a super race. In the USSR during the early years after the revolution, the economy was stunted and agriculture was prioritized as a means of combating this problem. So, with a revolutionized agricultural system, in steps our mate Ilya Ivanov, who was successful in artificial insemination. And this massively benefited Russian agriculture in breeding more resilient horses. Ilya Ivanov had studied biology in Paris and became obsessed with crossbreeding humans and apes. In 1910, he gave a presentation to the World Congress of Zoologists in Graz, Austria in which he described the possibility of obtaining a human-ape hybrid through artificial insemination. Ivanov proposed that such a hybrid would be stronger, more intelligent, and more resilient to human diseases. He also saw the potential for super warriors. Old mate couldn't do it on his own, however, and during the early years of Soviet rule and Russian communism, academia and scientific experiments weren't always known to get the proper funding. So... Ivanov branded his experiment as anti-Christian, which pleased the pro-atheist government. They saw this as a win for communism. Ivanov got his funding in 1926, and with thousands of rubles at his disposal, he set off for French Guinea in Africa. His plan was to capture male chimps and crossbreed them with human women via artificial insemination. The women would be paid willing participants, of course. I told you the story was weird. This plan failed for a couple of reasons. One, the chimps weren't at the age of sexual maturity and unable to breed. And two, no woman was willing to breed with chimp DNA, no matter how much Ivanov was offering. And I can't say I blame them. So Ivanov develops another plan, use female chimps and human male DNA. The problem with this though, is that chimps are hard to find and even harder to catch and harder to keep. Despite this, he found 13 chimpanzees and set about his artificial insemination. After several months, there were no viable pregnancies. There was no humanzee gestation at all. By now, Ivanov was desperate. Not only did he have a theory he wanted to prove, but he had been gifted $10,000 from a notoriously gulag-friendly government to spend, so he changed tack. He decided to inseminate women against their will under the guise of gynecological examinations. Thankfully for everyone, the French authorities found out about it and sent Ivanov home. Ivanov was back in the USSR and despite all the setbacks, he was still determined to breed his humanzee super race. He arranged for 20 chimpanzees to be sent to Russia. 
but only four survived the journey. In Russia, there was no hope of paying women to accept ape insemination, not to mention dwindling funds, so he called for any woman to offer their bodies in the name of science. Five women offered to carry half-ape babies. One volunteer, we know only as G, wrote this letter to Ivanov, quote, Dear Professor, with my private life in ruins, I don't see any sense in my further existence, but when I think that I could do a service for science, I feel enough courage to contact you. I beg you, don't refuse me. I ask you to accept me for the experiment. The experiment did not result in any pregnancies and Ivanov's reputation was on the line. Ivanov's experiments were widely reported and even hailed by the Bolshevik government, but after so many failed attempts, news died down and his experiments were viewed with a sense of moral condemnation. In 1930, during a Soviet purge of scientists, Ilya Ivanov was arrested and exiled to Kazakhstan. He died two years later. What's interesting is that Ivanov's story doesn't end there. In fact, his legacy for creating humanities lasted long after, and even as recent as six years ago, people were still trying to breed human-ape hybrids. The first person to coin the name humanzi was a doctor in the United States, evolutionary psychologist and University of Albany Professor Gordon Gallup, who developed the famous mirror self-recognition test, which proved primates could acknowledge their own reflection, claims his former university professor told him that a humanzi baby was born at a research facility where he used to work. According to Dr. Gallup in the 1920s in what was the first primate research center in the US in Orange Park, Florida, a female chimpanzee was inseminated with male human DNA, and this resulted in a successful pregnancy. That pregnancy even resulted in the live birth of a humanzi. The scientists obviously had second thoughts and the baby hybrid was euthanized shortly after. In 1967, Maoist China, a reported case of a female primate became pregnant with a human hybrid only to die from neglect after the lab scientists were forced to abandon the project following the outbreak of the Cultural Revolution. In the 1970s, with the famous case of Oliver, Dr. Gallup's term humanzi became mainstream. Oliver was touted as a human-ape hybrid. The creature walked on his hind legs like a human and had a protruding nose and was bald. Perhaps the only example of his kind. He's baffled science for the last 30 years. He's a great mystery. To look at, Oliver is certainly no ordinary chimp. His head is bald and smaller than normal chimps. His jaw is not as pronounced as you'd expect, and his ears are pointed rather than rounded. His scent is different, and other chimpanzees want nothing to do with him. Most chimpanzees can only walk upright when coaxed like this, and then only for short periods of time. Unlike Oliver, Chippy soon goes back to walking on all fours. But he's come in the house and uh, sit down, watch television, smoke a cigar, you know. You could give him chores. You'd say, uh, put hay in the wheelbarrow and, and take it over there. And he'd look where you're pointing, he would take it over there. A chimpanzee, you turn him loose, give him a wheelbarrow, he's gone. He's up a tree somewhere, you know. Oliver became extremely popular among the scientific community and was studied extensively. Some proposed he was the missing link, while others thought he was a hybrid. In 1996, Oliver's DNA was tested and was found to have 48 chromosomes, which meant he was actually, in fact, a member of the chimpanzee species. As recent as 2019 in China, a team of international scientists conducted an experiment to produce a human-ape embryo, in which they were successful. Their stated goal is to one day figure out how to use the animals to create organs for human transplants. They believe that creating a hybrid was an important first step. Human-animal chimeras would be utilized as sources for transplantation. The hybrid embryo was viable for 20 days, and it was destroyed soon after. You know, because of moral reasons. I actually have a link to the lab notes on that experiment, so if you're interested, you can find it linked below. Also in 2019, Japan became the first country to approve human-animal embryo experiments. The Japanese government hopes that this will benefit humans in the field of stem cell transplant research. Whatever the case may be, it still seems a bit taboo, even by today's standards, and it's probably this taboo that ultimately holds back research into such areas. 
I mean, have you heard what stem cells can do? Fix arthritis? Heal burn victims? Cure cancer? Seriously, go look it up. It's quite interesting. Well, that's it for Weird Wednesday, the Soviet Humanzy experiment. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. And I don't want any monkey business. Okay? Like, subscribe, and hit that bell. And I'll see you again next time in the shadows. <laughs>